Um, I wanted to talk to you about how I done localization for my website. Mm. So um, I know it's a, it's a topic we've been talking a lot here about how we do localization. I wanted to show you. So first of all, I show you my uh, IPPN. So I've got .com and .dot .es, the Spanish version. So I wanted to have it. I've got a certificate. So I wanted to have my application for Spanish users. And uh, basically, I've created the whole application in English. And, and I have a lot of hard-coded text everywhere and everything. So I wanted to, to use localization in Spanish. Uh, I even want to use a lot of time. I wanted to do it very quickly, as quickly as possible. And also, I wanted to, to have the, the text very close to the UI. I don't, didn't want to overcomplicate solutions. So then I wanted to basically achieve, uh, keep it simple. And you don't need it. Principle. So uh, here you have the website in English, and if you go to you can uh, in it session. Thank you very much. So here it is, everything in Spanish basically, and also there is a menu here in the top that I put uh, where you can change it to to English, and the thing updates automatically to, to the language, and then you can go to the different pages. Like you can go to the so this, uh, this is one of the pages that, that I got. And this is in English now, but you can select the, the language that you want. Again, I can go Spanish. And that changes, and I got like menus here. Now they are in Spanish. So I'm going to show you how I have achieved it very, very simple. I'm not saying this solution is suitable for, for here, because here we have more people working. And we have to be worried about different things, but I'm going to show you anyway how I, I've done it. And uh, when I was looking to React uh, internationalization, I came across something called React Int uh, I18, I think it is called internationalization. And I came across uh, this uh, package, it's called React Internationalization, uh, created by Yahoo. And I think the journey for Yahoo was they started creating their uh, localizations through the backend, and they figured that the, the thing was overcomplicating all the all the different parts of the application. So they went to move it to the to the UI, and they they created this package, and that gives you real internationalization, uh, different components that you can use in your application, like uh, provider, formatted message. So then you can use it like in a paragraph. You can provide a message, the full message, and you have normally in this uh, this framework you have a, a way to manage plural, singular, dates, and many many different things. Uh, so I thought, okay, maybe I give it a go, but uh, it still was too much for me because I wasn't worried about plural, singular, and I wasn't worried about dates and times and how to manage different time conversions and things like that for different countries. So I was reading a blog post on, uh, on how to use real internationalization, and I found someone talking about how they moved from this to something called counterpart. And I'll show you what it is. Counterpart is an NPM package. And basically what it is is, if you think on, on internationalization or localization, what, do you, what would you do? Like, you, you have a, a file with all your uh, text in, in, in English, for example, and another file uh, with all the text in Spanish. And basically, the framework will allow you to select one of the languages based on the logic or, or the user or something. And then it's basically reading from a key a dictionary with keys and values. And basically, you, you get a key, which is a, a part of the page. And then you get the value will be the text that you apply in that page. And basically, this package, that's what it does apart from uh, interpolation. So things like, uh, I can show you an example in this package that you can use. Um, interpolation, I think it was further down in the bottom. Localization, okay, let's try it. Uh, interpolate. Interpolation, here. Yeah. So what you do basically is um, you call translate, this is the, the key, 
like um, the, 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 the identifier, and then you can provide an object with uh, any keys and values, and um, then this framework will transform anywhere it finds. In this case, bar, it will change it to whatever value you, you provide, like a like an object with keys and values that you can you can change it. So so far so good. Uh, so this is what I use. Maybe I'll show you. So this build file. Uh, this is um, a, when I bundle the application. I use it. Uh, that's why I say, Jonathan. In this case, this works for, works for me. I don't have like uh, like thousands of users. I've got maybe a couple of people using this. It's different different problems. But I wanted to show you this because, in my view, these sort of things should be like you start simple and then you complicate the thing as you as you go along. Not the opposite. You don't introduce something very complex and then you, you use it like twenty percent of it. So that that was my approach for for my application. So, so you have two bundles. Right? I got two bundles, so basically this works. Uh, I have these uh, files, the English version, and uh, what I I decided like uh, this is the English version, and the structure is the following. I've got uh, the first level, it's the the page, so the home page, and then I have I have different sections in the home page, and then I've got different fields uh, here, and I got the same for the Spanish version. So if I go home, here you have the, the Spanish translation with the same keys. Uh, the way I have this set up is in the React Proto. You have your main application, con uh, container, or whatever. Uh, in a moment, I'll tell something more about this. But basically, I have a React Proto here with all the roots. And here you have your main application container. And what I've done is, in the main application container, I'm in component did mount. I think it is, or component will mount. Uh, I'm reading the um, um, the host, so ES or EN, Spanish or English, uh, and then I'm setting the language. Translator is the package itself. Translator, it's um, it's an instance of um, state translator. Let me find the uh, translator is counterpart. That's my that's that's my instance. I'm setting that in the state, so that I can modify that anytime I need to modify modify the states. Mm -hmm. It will be available. Uh, so what I do is I set the language, or I register translation, so Spanish and English. Then I set the language, and then I pass that translator through through a router handler. So that means the translator is going to be available in any page I need to use it. So I can show you, so far so you. So now I can show you the home page from the third version. So in effect, you are actually doing the translation on the fly. Yeah, the doing the translation on the fly. That's correct, do not. So yeah, basically, you see here, this props those trans translator. A translator because the real router is sending that to me through the through the main application container. And here, what I got is the, the keys. I got the page, section, um, and field. And also, what happens when I change the language in the in the menu? Let me show you what happens and how how the page changes that that quickly. If I go to the um, what is it in uh, language or uh, trainer trainer user menu? Is a menu. I don't take. Uh, I, I finish very quickly. Um, so what I've got is I've got the menu here with uh, Spanish and English. The flag is here. So what I do is when the user uh, selects clicks in the English flag, I trigger this function English selected. And what I do is I trigger here using uh, a framework called Reflux. It's like really old and no one uses this anymore, but this is what I'm using at the moment. So what I do is I trigger an update of the language, English. And then what happens, it's someone is going to be listening to that uh, on update, on update language completed. And I don't find any. No case. In case, yes. Couple of years. Um, what I'm doing here, oh, 
Oh, no. Sorry, I'm close. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, there is a listener to that action, update language. Then if, when the language is updated in the user, that is listening. And I go and tell the translator, translator, your language now is um, English or Spanish. And then any page that has a translator is going to update the, 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 the internationalization. Did That's you, basically you how it trigger. Yeah, but you'd have had to trigger another render of all those components. Did you do that manually, or is that? That's a good point, James. That's why I've got the translator in the application container in the sticks. And so it's just so that that's changed, and so it's flowed down that updated property. React root on my container is listening to the change of the yeah, language, okay, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that changes yeah. that properties of basically all the changes through through everywhere. That's pretty sweet. It's really sweet, but it's really simple. I can complicate it from now. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying this is the pros, but what I'm saying is uh, make it simple. I, today I want to talk about keys. Keep it simple like this, and also remember to update your dependencies. Uh, this is like one minute. It's this application is using React 0.13 and React Router uh, 0.13. Uh, React, React is now 15, version 15 or something like that. So what happened is at some point I was creating my, my dependencies and it was taking longer. I, said I was lazy because and lazy and said, okay, I am not going to do this now. Now it's too late. Now if I update, I'm going to, I don't know, like one month or one year or something like that. So remember to update your dependencies. And that's it for me. Any questions? How do you keep updated the two different translation files? Do you have any console tool that allows you to go through all your files and then generate the keys from the... At the moment, as you can imagine, it's a library. At the, moment, at, the pro, at the moment, so, uh, so now in translating, I have one page uh, pending to translate. So I go to the page, grab the text, put it in English file, put it in the Spanish one, and then I say translator dot read that key instead of reading the hard code. But yeah, I don't have any problems. No. The idea was a friend of mine who is now a developer was going to help me translating, mm -hmm. and I gave him access to, to GitHub, and I told him here's the Spanish and here's the, the English, and you can do the translation. This is really cool, but the only real sort of hurdle I can see in using this on our system is it's not just that we have like for like, you know, hello versus hola. We've got actual different varying lengths of content in, in the same components across um, locations. So, for example, the, the footer has more components in the UK one than the US one. So if there was some way to overcome this, this would be so much better than the batshit system we're using right now. I see what I mean. Uh, on the other hand, I was thinking this is like changing a complete website to a different language. So this is like really involved compared to um, changing a slight word in one yeah. page for, and even our localization files, most of them uh, haven't changed it. Yeah, all you have is language files to worry about. To mm -hmm. That's it. That's, that's it. Uh, but yeah, maybe. <laughs> like, you don't need to update any schemas, you don't need to worry about resolvers, and objects flowing to and from. Yeah, it's really, really, this simple. Is really cool. But this is really and awesome. Did it. Yeah, I mean, oh. then my, my, what I want to try is, I don't think this language is too simple and our case is more complicated, but maybe I want to take a look at real internationalization. Jonathan suggested a long time ago the C3PO, which was very similar to this stuff. So, yeah. Sorry, what's your name? Monroe. And one. I'm going to make a really good point, though, because once you have done your initial translation, then maintain is, is another story. You need to be able to keep things in sync and remove. Mm -hmm. That's a different yeah, story. That's, that, the that's the next step, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You have like a batch command or something like that, mm -hmm. because you have to do looking at all the keys. Uh, and also right. updating the existing one yeah. is adding. Normally yeah. what happens is the like ones, larger yeah. companies tend to have like a content team or a localization mm -hmm. team as spe specialized tools that help them essentially update them into the Git repository without having to be developers. But, That's right. Yeah.